Third generation Suzuki SV650s are great bikes. They're fun to ride, they're reliably engineered. They require a little bit of periodic maintenance to keep them going, but as long as you keep up with that, they should give you thousands of miles of problem-free riding. Engine oil is critically important to the operation of your bike. Not only does it lubricate and cool the engine, in your SV650 it is also the lubricant for the clutch and the transmission. So the oil in your SV650 is working over time. It needs to be replaced periodically, and Suzuki calls for replacement roughly every 3,500 miles, starting at 600 miles. The oil filter is specified to be replaced roughly every 10,500 miles, or three oil changes. If you plan on owning and riding your SV650 for a while, you've got some oil changes in your future. It's an easy job to do, even if you're not mechanically inclined. It just takes a few tools and a little bit of patience, and you can get it done. So we'll go through what is required to do it and get you started. You can do it! Let's go over the things you're going to need to do the oil change on your Suzuki SV650. You're going to have to take the drain bolt off the bike, which is a 14 millimeter bolt, and it's tucked right up against the exhaust pipe. So you're going to need either a deep socket or a shallow socket on an extension so that the head of your ratchet will have the clearance that it needs. You're also going to need the ratchet itself. You probably want to use a torque wrench. You're going to need a funnel to put the new oil in the bike. The old crush washer is kind of hard to get off of the drain bolt. What I generally do is tap it free gently using a hammer whacking on the screwdriver to separate the two. A pair of pliers may also come in handy when you're removing the old gasket from the drain plug. Uh, obviously you're gonna need a drain pan to catch the oil that you're draining out of the bike. The drain pan needs to be low profile enough to fit under the exhaust pipe. Something lower profile than say five inches, but preferably around four inches, a shop rag or shop towel. And then once you're done draining the oil, you want to transfer that to some vessel like an old water bottle or something so you can take that oil in to get recycled. The manual calls for 10W40. If you don't change the filter, 2400 milliliters or 2.4 liters, which is about two and a half US quarts. If you change the oil and the oil filter, using the standard Suzuki oil filter, it's 2750 milliliters or about 2.9 quarts. I like to use either this Mobile One Racing 4T, so the good synthetic stuff, or this Castrol 10W44T stuff. This is also good. If you're doing the 600 mile service for the SV650, you may want to use Suzuki brand oil and keep the receipt for that. You're going to need an oil filter. I just use the Suzuki brand oil filter. Finding OEM Suzuki motorcycle parts online is pretty straightforward. Websites like BikeBandit or Partzilla.com give you access to the Suzuki parts catalog, so you just got to navigate through that to find the part you're looking for on your bike. You'll find the oil filter under the oil cooler group. It can be recognized easily from the diagram. Find that part in the list, give it a click, and now you can see the part number, the price, no problem. You'll need a new drain plug gasket. It's like a crush washer that's not reusable. It can be found under the crankcase diagram in the Suzuki parts catalog. Now you don't necessarily need a tool to tighten down or remove these oil filters, but they are castellinated on the top or faceted. And you'll, you may find it easier if you use a tool like this, which attaches to a ratchet. The type that this is, is a 68 millimeter with 14 facets. These are the things that I generally use when I'm doing the oil change on the SV650. The manual specifies that you should change the oil with the engine warmed up to operating condition. Conventional wisdom is that the hot engine has all the sediments and gunk in your oil stirred up into solution, so when you drain the oil, all that crap goes out with the oil. Another benefit is that the oil is generally runnier when it's hotter, so it may drain out a little bit faster. Now that the bike's warm, we're going to start by draining the oil. And to do that, you need to remove the filler cap first. And that basically breaks the vacuum seal to allow the drain to occur efficiently. And set it off to the side, or you can kind of prop it up sideways here. So we're going to start by putting the drain pan under the drain bolt, which is tucked up against the exhaust system right here. you got to be really careful because this stuff is hot after warming up the bike. And you will burn the crap out of yourself. The drain bolt is a 14 millimeter bolt, so who needs a 14 millimeter socket on a ratchet? Break that guy loose first. So you're going to be unscrewing this, being careful not to burn yourself on the exhaust pipe. And it's going to dump oil out once it gets to you, so I'm going to have this guy under here. I don't want to drop this guy into the oil, and i got to be prepared. This thing is going to end up getting kind of bathed in oil, and so is my finger, so I'm wearing gloves. Okay. 
you feel it starting to get ready to go, just get ready for the mess of oil that's going to come dumping out and the fact that the bolt's going to suddenly be free to drop. There it goes. And so a little bit of oil is going to get on the exhaust pipe itself because of the way they've designed this, but that's alright, you can clean that up afterwards. The Suzuki comes with a magnetized drain bolt. This will collect any metal shavings, and you may see some metal shavings there the first time you do the oil change at the 600 mile service, but this bike has over 2,000 miles on it. So you see there's no metal shavings on this guy, but yeah, that's the magnet on the end there. So when you get this bolt off, you want to clean it up. You see here, this is the crushed crush washer that you're not going to reuse. You're going to have to replace that. So I've got the drain bolt nice and clean. No metal shavings are on the magnet and overall the whole thing is clean. And now I've got to remove the crush washer from it. So you'll see, you know, just trying to get your fingernail in under that, say that it, it really doesn't want to come off. So what I'll do is I'll take a screwdriver, a small one, place it up against the, the seal like this. And just give it a couple of gentle taps. Until I feel this thing start to get free enough to start working it off and there you go didn't take much just a gentle tap you can kind of see it it's moving away from the head of the bolt so you can get a little space in there okay so once you've got it started onto the threads you can do this with your fingers if you're patient started. You're going to need to replace this with a new one. Once you have the crush washer off, just clean the area that it was on, you know, under the lip of the bolt. It's already pretty clean, but you don't want any grit or dirt in that area when you put the new one on. And then I'll usually give the threads a clean. And then while it's off, you want to inspect it for any damage. Just looking at the threads, see if any of them are severely bunged up. If you have any deep scratches or gouging, in this surface along here and make sure your magnet is intact and that the region around it is clean and that this head of this bolt here is not stripping or anything. If there's any question about this, like it, it looks like it's been damaged or it's seen better days, replace it. Yeah, the oil filter is positioned right over the exhaust header pipe here, so it's going to make a little bit of a mess. It's going to drip oil down onto the pipe and I want to catch that while this is still dripping, so I'm just going to scoot the oil drain pan forward. And just to make cleanup a little bit easier later, I'm going to stick a piece of aluminum foil in between the exhaust pipe and the oil filter. Okay, so that thing is just positioned there to let oil drip from this face onto the foil, and then it should just drip down into the oil pan. I think if you really wanted to do this without buying the tool, you could, but I would rather do it with the tool. It works by connecting with a 3 8 inch drive to a socket, or to a ratchet, I mean. So once that's in, it is ready to use, and you just stick this right over the end of the oil filter and start turning. Makes it really easy. Once you've backed it out past the seal, it gets really easy to turn, and just be aware that once it gets free enough, as you can see, it's going to dribble oil all over the place. You just got to be ready for when it hits the end of the threads because it'll just fall. Okay, there we go. So that's the oil filter out, and you can see the thing that it was threaded onto. It's a long set of screws, so just a lot of turns to get it off. And I want to recycle the oil in the filter, so I want to just drain as much of the oil out of this as I can. So when you put the new crush washer on the bolt, I've been placing it with the conical thin part here facing the bolt head. I've done it like this every time so far and not had any oil leaks. If you look in the manual, it's not really clear which way this goes on. So I've been putting it on like this, and as I said, not had any problems. So that guy's ready to go back in. So once it's drained enough for your satisfaction, then you want to clean up the surface under here for the drain bolt. You're going to want to put the drain bolt in first, then the oil filter. And once those two are sealed up, then you can start adding oil. So I just want to wipe this surface down clean that the bolt goes to and make sure there's no grit under there. And it's going to continue dripping oil, but that's okay. See, just make sure that the surface doesn't have anything but oil there. Start finger tightening this into the hole, being careful not to drop it into the oil and being careful not to cross thread it. So again, this is a 14 millimeter bolt. 
pretty much not dripping out of there now that I got this thing on there. So I'm just gonna move the oil pan out of the way. We're cranking this down a little bit faster. And this needs to be torqued down to 15 and a half foot pounds or 186 inch pounds. And now I can no longer tighten it. And clean off the oil there. And I'm gonna switch to my torque wrench. This is a 3 8 inch drive torque wrench with a 14 millimeter socket. I fit that over. And you'll see as this is tightening down that it's going to crush the seal up against the oil pan and that's what you want to see. Okay. If you don't have a torque wrench and you're doing this by feel or by hand, what you're going to want to do is make sure you've tightened it down to where that crush washer is crushed nice and flat. You know, so that it looks like it did on the old crush washer before you took it off. So when you're ready to put the new oil filter in, you're going to want to partially fill it with new oil and run a little bit of oil along the seal. So here's the new oil filter from Suzuki. I like to use the original manufacturer. I do like the fact that it's got these facets here so that the tool can attach to it. If you get an aftermarket one, it'll probably have a different set of those. You'll want to keep that in mind so that if you buy the tool for it, you buy the one that fits the oil filter you plan to use. The oil filter from Suzuki is nice, comes with this plastic cover to keep crap out of there. Once you take this off, you want to make sure you don't let stuff get in there other than oil. What I'm going to do is pour a little bit of oil inside the oil filter. And the reason for doing that is that as the engine starts to pump oil around when you first start it up, there will be a delay of the lubrication that you just added getting to the rest of the engine as the oil is pumping in to fill this volume in here up. So basically the idea is just to kind of kickstart the oil flow by already having oil inside the filter. But since on the Suzuki you're going to mount it laterally like this, a lot of that's going to pour back out if you overfill it. So you don't want to totally fill it. So when you first fill it up, the level of the oil inside drops subsequent to, you know, you filling it up. So you can see I added that amount of oil and now you don't really see any more. That's because it's kind of soaked into the filter elements to the side. So I'm going to add a little bit more again. Let the level settle again. See where you're at. So if you spill a little bit on the side here, that's okay. Just conveniently there so that you can now lubricate the oil seal here. And the reason for doing this is that as you're tightening down the oil filter, you don't want to have this rubber seal bind or grab on the engine and then twist in its place or bunch up on one side and get stretched on another side. So if you lube it like this with oil, as you're tightening it to the engine, this will just easily slide along the surface of the engine so you won't have any damage done to this uh, rubber seal thing holds a surprisingly large amount of oil. Before I install the oil filter, I'm gonna clean the surface that it seals against really quickly here. It actually looks fairly clean. And I got my oil filter full of oil, so I'm expecting some to spill out, sure enough. I get it onto these threads carefully because you don't want to cross thread it. And then once it grabs, it should spin on pretty easily. And then get it tight by your fingers and switch over to the torque wrench. Okay, that's at the torque spec. So when you're ready to add oil to the engine, you're going to be pouring it in through this port here and you're going to be viewing through this viewport the level of the oil to make sure that it is between this line and this line. In order to check the level of that oil, you're going to need the bike to be standing straight up and down and not leaned on the side stand. If you're lucky enough to have a wheel chock, you can stand the bike upright by rolling it up into the wheel chock. To do the oil filling, this is a pretty small port. You're going to need a funnel. I like this long tapered funnel design with the skinny enough tip to fit into these small motorcycle oil fill ports, which then has this kind of profile where the lip sticks out, gives you a place to aim the oil when you're pouring it. And it's very nice. So you want to pour this slowly enough. It does take a little bit of time to drain into the engine. Okay, so that's one down. And you can see down here on the level that it's not even showing in the window yet. So we'll start bottle number two.
So that's two bottles down. You can see in the window there that it hasn't started to show yet. So we'll start the third bottle and this is the one where we're not gonna use the whole thing. It's very important not to overfill. When you start getting into this third bottle, what I do is I pour almost half of it in. So if you take note of where the level is when you start, you can see that then you know get it down to about here keeping an eye on your window to make sure that you're not already starting to overfill so i'm going to start pouring this in it will take a little bit of time for what you're pouring in to show up in that window as the oil has to kind of trickle its way down into the oil pan so i'm starting to see it show up at the bottom of the window so i'm going to pause and let it the oil settle and see what that gets me to so you can see we're almost at the minimum and we've used just about half of that bottle and I expect as oil gets pulled into the engine that this level might drop a little bit when you warm the bike up and run it. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more to get it halfway between the marks, and then I'm gonna run the bike, shut it off and look again, pop it off if it needs it. So let's add that little extra bit that we need now. You're looking at oil behind some glass that's some thickness, and if you look at this from above, there will be a perspective skew of what you're seeing. So you kind of want to get your eyeball down on the level so that you're looking perpendicular to this engine. That'll give you a more honest reading of where you are with respect to those marks. So when you run the bike, you're going to want to seal the crankcase. You don't want to run it without the oil filler cap on, so you got to remove the funnel. And then put this guy back on and tighten that down so that it seals that volume in there from the outside world. Okay, after running the bike, I took it off the wheel chalk and I have helper over here keeping the bike upright. And now you can see that the oil level has dropped. Suzuki wants you to idle the bike for three minutes. And after idling for three minutes, let it sit for three minutes. So that has happened. The oil is warm and now we're getting an honest check of the oil. Looks like we need to add a little bit more. So we add a little bit and check again. Take it a second to trickle down. You can see the level is slowly starting to come up and the helper's getting impatient so you don't want to take too long. And it looks like we're good. So when you're done, you're gonna to wanna to inspect your work. Make sure you didn't forget to put the oil filler cap on and tighten that down. You're gonna to wanna to check the oil level. It looks empty here because it's leaning on the side stand. So you're gonna to need to stand it straight up and down to look. You're gonna to wanna to run the bike, let it run for a little bit and check all around where the oil filter meets to the engine and make sure you're not getting leakage of oil there. There may be some residual oil there from your work. Make sure you don't confuse that for a leak. You know, clean that up. If you do see some dripping out, clean that up and look again after running again, just to make sure. And then do the same thing for the drain bolt. Okay. So I got the bike running and I'm checking it for leaks. The drain plug here, I'm looking around this to make sure there's nothing dripping off that. And there is not. So that's looking good. And then where the oil filter meets the engine, I'm checking along here and just making sure I don't see any oil leaking. And I don't. So we're looking good. The SV650 is ready to ride with some fresh oil.